back to my channel, Torathena, where today it is the weekend and I'm doing something quite exciting on the weekend now. Basically, this channel has been a bit all over the place for the past year, really. And now I'm finally starting to get to this structure where I regularly and consistently do comic related videos every single day. The problem is I'm not just about comics. I love doing videos where I'm doing film reviews with my friends, where I'm just talking to the camera, telling story times, or weird little quirky things that I have in the future planned. And I kind of thought, well, that doesn't really fit in with the work I do with the comics. So I kind of had this bright idea that the weekend would be not for work, but for my own personal fun. These are the videos where I want to talk to you about other stuff that isn't comic reviews. So I really hope you like this new format. And today I want to talk to you about the films I've seen in the cinema lately. Okay, it's not my best video, but I have been to the cinema lately and I forgot how much I love the cinema and I want to talk about the films I've seen. Quite frankly, I don't really know enough to review films, so these are just my opinions because most people forget that opinions and reviews are completely different things. So I'm just here talking about the films that I've watched recently and telling you what I thought of them. And then hopefully you'll tell me if you've seen them or not and what you think of them too and we will start communicating. So the first film I've seen lately is Popstar and I was quite excited to see this because I'd heard good things about it and Andy Samberg is a little crush of mine. Interesting fact about myself, I used to despise Lonely Island and I mean loathe them. When they used to make songs like Jizz in My Pants, which to be honest, I still don't actually find that funny. I used to think it was horrific. I thought they were the equivalent of fart jokes. I thought I was far too old for them, even when I was like 20. And I also thought that any guy who thought it was hilarious just wasn't my type at all. I, yeah, I was really judgmental about them. And then I started seeing the other work that they do and I don't know why, I kind of thought they were funny and then their songs kind of became funnier to me because of that. I think maybe the more I started understanding their humour and realising I liked their humour, that these maybe particular jokes I didn't find funny were still funny because in context to their humour it was funny. That makes no sense. <laughs> but either way, I like them now. I don't love all their songs, but I loved Popstar, thought it was brilliant, the songs were genius, and I actually thought it was actually an incredibly deep film for the shallow film that it is. <laughs> But yeah, my Lucy review would be like three stars out of five smiley faces. So there you go. The second film I went to go see was Finding Dory. And I was so excited to go see that because Finding Nemo was one of my teenage films. I loved it. I got it when I was like 16 for Easter. And it just, it was a film I would watch on repeat. I still quote Finding Nemo so much and still can't say an eminemony. However, something happened during Finding Dory that I was really sad about. I checked the time. I have a rule that if I check the time during a film, then the film is not good because I'm bored. The film was good and there were some funny jokes, but the problem is when you make the comic relief, the protagonist, then they are no longer funny. There is no other funny thing to make it funny and everything just kind of gets washed out. I feel like the film was a nice film to watch. I'm glad I watched it, but I wouldn't rush out to watch it again. Unfortunately, this gets Four purple squares. Then I went to go see David Brent. I love The Office. I love Ricky Gervais. I love pretty much everything he does. He gets a bit preachy at times and sometimes he tries far too hard to drive a certain particular message home, but he is to me genius. The invention of lying is so clever. I genuinely could analyze that for hours to friends until they throttled me to shut up. David Brent was really funny, but the problem was it was an hour and a half of David Brent. I can't watch cringy humor. I just, oh, it just it kills me. And you need someone to break David Brent up. And it, he's going on tour trying to become a rock star. And the songs are brilliant and he's brilliant. He's like, he's still 10 out of 10 at being David Brent. Probably because probably is David Brent in real life a little bit. But his groupies, not so much his groupies, his, his band that he travels with, they don't break him up enough. So yeah, it was a really good film, but I don't think I could watch that again because there's not enough interaction. It's the interaction with David Brent that makes David Brent so funny. And I don't think there's enough of that. So this film gets three out of five cumin jars. If you've seen that, you'll get it. <laughs> Yesterday, I went to go see Sausage Party, uh, which is the Seth Rogen film about food in a grocery store that have a consciousness and they want to get picked by humans because they believe they'll go into the great beyond and that is their destiny. And they think it's this beautiful place. They think it's like heaven. And effectively, they think they're gonna get laid, apparently. That's, that's what comes across. 
But no, we all know that when we buy food, it's not to be nice to them, it's to eat them. And it's all about finding the truth of what's happening between this rogue hot dog and bun who fell out of their packets on the way to the counter. There is a lot more that goes on in this and there's actually a lot of deep context which I think they really tried to drive home a lot at the end of it. I think it swears too much and I know Seth Rogen, this film was made by Seth Rogen for Seth Rogen. It wasn't made for anybody else. He's gonna go home at night, get high as he obviously does a lot and just watch it himself over and over again and just laugh at himself over and over again and honestly I'm not gonna lie sometimes I do that to my own YouTube videos because I think I'm hilarious and obviously Seth Rogen thinks he's hilarious and this film was made for him and that isn't a diss in any way whatsoever it's it, I honestly don't think it was my type of film but I knew it wasn't going to be this is definitely for a different age group or age demo it's definitely for a different demographic i think that there were a lot of people my age who still found this hilarious but i detest anyone that swears for the sake of swearing i am a filthy mouthed individual i swear a lot but the beauty of swearing is to highlight the point you are trying to get across in a very horrible way i think swearing is a wonderful thing and it's a part of the human language and it's just it's great when you swear just because you can because you think it's cool then you are 12 years old and this film kind of felt like seth rogan was 12 years old going oh my gosh i can make a film where i can swear oh my gosh And then it ends up with a big orgy. That's kind of the film. So yeah, not my type of film, but there were parts of it I did like. I, to be honest, the first half, I actually enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. I thought the actual plot and where they were going with it was actually really good. I thought there was a lot more they added to it that I didn't think they were going to, but there were just certain things that knocked me off my game a bit. And uh, the, the swearing at the beginning, because there's a lot of it at the beginning, and then the scenes at the very, very end, don't watch it with your mum, okay? Don't take any relative whatsoever or your partner. Just go alone. Just don't watch, don't wait till it's on DVD and watch it alone. <laughs> I give this film a squiggly face. <laughs> Okay, I've tried to be like just silly and whatever talking to this, but genuinely this next film is the reason why I did this video really. And it's because today I went to go see Kubo and the Two Strings and I have to talk about it. This film is the most beautiful film ever. This is a film done by Laka Laka. I've never heard of them, but a lot of my friends when I was talking about this film were like, oh, they've done this, this and that, and they're really good and I love them. So I have to go find all these other films that they've done because this film was just magical. And that's the only word I can come across, it was magical. It's kind of about this boy, it's almost like mythology, and it's like this boy who has to go find this unbreakable sword and this shield and this helmet because his family is at stake and his destiny is at stake and his the gods are chasing after them who are also his family. There's so much to it, I'm not doing it justice, seriously. And the most upsetting thing is, I don't think they did justice to it. I watched their trailer and it did nothing for me. And I mean nothing, it didn't seem very good. And I went to go and watch this only because I have a membership at my cinema where I can go as many times as I want and I only pay this one monthly fee. And I only went because it was free. And I went there and I left and I went, I would have paid for that. If I'd known it was that good, I would have paid for that. I, well, I wouldn't because I've got a monthly subscription, but if I didn't, I would have gone to the cinema to pay for a ticket to go and see this film. I also thought it was CGI. It's not, it's stop motion. It's incredible. It's in, I'm in awe of everything that they've done, knowing that it's all stop motion. It's like, what? I. The problem is when I love something so much and I try to review it, even though that's pretty much this channel, I can't do it justice because I get so wrapped up in my emotions. Also, I gave no research to this film. I've come home, turned my camera on, and I just wa kind of wanted to say, please go and watch it. Give it a chance. It's amazing, especially if you have a membership like mine where you can just go and see any film you want. Definitely go and see it. But I also say it's definitely worth the money. The only problem I had with this film is there were certain directional points that were wrong. A lot of the comedic timing was off, or I was thinking certain shots would have been done better. But the actual film itself was the most beautifully stunning magical film I've seen in so long. I, probably since Les Mis in the cinema. I just, I 
can't remember the last time I cried that much or I was moved that much or I was just in awe that much. I just, I loved it. This film gets four out of five trumpets. That's the best score I could give. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this crazy, weird, absolutely pointless video, which probably fits right into 98% of the videos on YouTube, I, I suppose. <laughs> but either way, I hope you enjoyed it. This is just a weekend video. Next week will be all comic reviews as always. So stay tuned, subscribe, like and comment and all that jazz, and I'll see you soon. Bye.